evening with us when we should all be drinking at the bar. I don't know who the we hell can is. drink here. Yeah, we are drinking here, and it's actually probably cheaper. Uh, probably, probably. <laughs> probably. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Probably cheaper. Thank Millie for the booze. Yes, Thank Millie, you and uh, you, you can come to the shop, Is there anyone else who wants to welcome? I want to be on. <laughs> 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 Best panel ever. I don't know how I'm going to get control of you people. Or, you know, reading something is just really serious and downright disturbing. You're just fucked. I am fucked. Pretty much. Norm is just blowing the doors off it. That was a good story. Rope. Rope probably works. Got it. Vanilla. Thank you. That's great. This one. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Not like a rope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's 20. Thank you. <laughs> Two. I have never loved really, Mr. Rogers does. more. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I train long and hard. My dictionary and cake juice. Okay, so do any of you people not know who I am? Who are you? Who the hell are you? <laughs> I know, you're, you're sure as hell like Paul Cooper. Wait, 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 wait. Phil Rossi. Yeah! Oh. No, Phil Rossi is hot. Phil Rossi has hot. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. That Roche. Eliana Kaiser. Oh, shut like up. Everybody Christiana Ellis? So God, this is getting worse by the minute. Okay. I hate you people. Someone in the front row wanted to walk in. Thank you. I can't even get started on my reading because you people are still passing around boobs. <laughs> Well, you got to have that before you read. I'm sorry. God, I love you. Oh, that's close enough. It'll make no one, no one awesome. listens to your shit so bad. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nobody should listen to my shit oh, so bad. Oh, wow. I mean, I don't write it so far. Why should you listen, should you listen to me so Excuse me. No, I, yes. I poured it in my coffee. Okay. Okay. Shit, you, that's my coffee. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Want me are to you take possession of my shit? It's not new. Are you fake ass little bitches ready to start a war? Hell yeah! Woo! Sorry, you're using enough to start. No, it's fine. My name is unimportant. Um, <laughs> I am Paul Ellard Cooley, writer of psychological horror, thriller, fantasy, dark shit, blah, 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 and evidently I'm going to use lots of swear words this evening. Oh, yeah. there's, going be, there's going to be lots of adult content in this little thing. Ow! Ruffy, and ruffy. I'm going to read as long as I can get to the stopping point as best I can. My voice is a little shaky tonight, oh, so please things. forgive me. And my British accent is going to be awful. When isn't it? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's a. even worse than usual. A. <coughs> oh, Canadian in the audience. So those of you who follow my work and those of you who don't follow my work, um, I wrote a, I have a series called Garavius Children, which uh, starts out in, um, in 5500 BCE and moves forward through time. It's about Nephilim, which are children of, do children of gods. It moves forward through time and... The, I have two more stories to write in BCE. Once that's done, that'll be the Garagas Children Ancients series, which I have a shirt for. Nice. Yes. Take it off. Um, Later, if we get more alcohol into them. I'll make sure you get back to the room, but I can't burn yeah, last night. Well. <laughs> wow, Mr. Winky stirred at that idea. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm like, are you kidding? This is gold, man. I, I, I inherited the monkey's chubby. I mean, what's going on? That's why he's standing behind the chair. Yeah. It's... Okay, so what I'm reading tonight is a story that has not been published, has not been podcasted. Um, it takes place in the here and now. It is a Garagas Children Fiends link between the two series. And you lucky fiendlings who are here, lucky listeners, are going to, if, you, if you're following the work, you're going to start seeing more connections. This is your treat for coming to Balticon. Hopefully awesome. you like it. <coughs> so, you, Mr. Cooley. Let me just say that I wrote a story called Tattoo. Yes! Thank you. And there's a very obnoxious <laughs> character in there named Nigel. Yeah! Yay! Nigel is a tattooist. An inker, if you will, of flesh. Believe that if you will. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> He's Canadian. Jesus Christ, man. Two separate countries divided by a common language. One of you ladies stick something. of you ladies stick something in his mouth, please. <laughs> Dude, it's long but not that long, all right? Shut up. 
<laughs> so if you have listened or read Tattoo, you will know exactly what's going on. If you don't and don't even know anything about Garaga's children, that's okay. You'll pick it up. <laughs> We're gonna get you going the entire time, sorry. It's not me, baby. It's not me. Baby. Don't make me pull this con over. Momentum, baby. Done. Are you gonna turn around and take us all Wait, home? If you do, are you gonna spank him? A spanking? A spanking? Thanks, socks. Jesus Christ. Fucking <laughs> drug degenerates. <laughs> Sober. We are your people. Oh, you are my people. We are your people. <laughs> hey! Hey! Give yourselves a round of applause for being the most obnoxious audience I have ever had to deal with. <laughs> yeah! Read the fucking story. I'd like to, but you won't shut the fuck up. I'm annoyed. Leave it alone. Christ. Make him run out of steam. I'll just read it for you. Oh, well, that'll work well. <laughs> okay, so the story is called Marker. <coughs> you will understand later. Mmm, <clears throat> looking good, Jackson. Yeah, the lines look good. Healed up well. Nah, the sky doesn't look too bad. Five skin grafts, and you'd think they'd have gotten it nice and right, but I guess that's about as good as it's going to get. Damn glad you decided not to tat that. You're kidding, right? Fuck. Okay. We'll talk about that next time. Let's finish the color up on this bit and then let you heal up again. That's it, mate. You know the drill. Hey, I've got a question for you. You know that story you wrote a couple weeks back? The one about the bodies they found in the warehouse? What? <laughs> Don't move, damn it. You know better than that. Now, what was I saying? Warehouse, right. You wrote something about the cops finding strange writing in the place. Did you see it yourself? But you saw photos. Ah, oh, thought so. Must be nice to have a pig on call. Oh. oh, okay, I won't call him a pig again. Anyway, it reminded me about something. No, the writing, Jackson. Christ, keep up. And stop fucking moving, dammit. Just sit there, shut up, enjoy the ink, and let me talk. I'll tell you a little story. Remember when I told you I'd seen some strange shit in this job? Well, I wasn't just talking about pawns and all the keloid scars. Guess back in 1998 or so, yeah, Jackson, I came here in the 90s. Well, let's just say the tap folk in London wanted me out of there. You don't need the details on that, mate. So I'm getting the shop sorted, getting ready to lock up for the night, and the bell over the door goes off. I didn't have the music blaring since I wasn't working, so I stepped out of my office and put my head out through the beads. Couldn't believe what I was seeing, mate. Usually at midnight you get the drunken fat boys, the gangbangers, or some biker who's decided he's got insomnia. Back then, money was pretty tight, so I'd tat him. These days, I couldn't be bothered to give a fuck and wouldn't, would show him the door. But instead of one of them, I got her. Beautiful she was, mate. Just gorgeous. Dyed black hair, lap leather pants, and wearing one of those Victorian-type tops. Pale skin and green, green eyes. God, she was beautiful. She turned to me, caught me gaping at her, and smiled. Ivory teeth. Damn, Jackson, she looked like a postcard from a vampire lover's dream. <laughs> yeah, golf as golf gets, mate. Even down to the dark M's gracing her feet. I struggled to say something. I had to clear my throat. Help you? I finally managed. The golf looked down at the glass counter, studying the photos of the tats I'd done. I've heard you're the guy to come to, she said. Tell you something, Jackson. If her body hadn't already made Mr. Winkle stand at attention, her voice would have... <laughs> Christ, I've never heard a woman talk like that outside of a sex chat line. Um, okay, I stammered, and walked through the curtains. It was summer, and I was wearing shorts and sandals. Yeah, I know, I never wear that shit anymore. Not since I got proper air conditioning in this place, and got a little more used to the blazing hot sun and humidity. Back then, though, I didn't want to sweat all over the customers. What do you need? She looked up from the counter and back at me with a sneaky grin. Something special, she said in that husky, melodious voice. She reached inside the back pocket of those tight leather pants and pulled out a piece of paper. She held it in front of her, shoulder high, and swept back a lock of hair from her forehead. Something very special. I took a step forward to take it from her, and she pulled it away. But only if you can keep your mouth shut about it. I frowned. 
What do you mean? Can you keep a secret? It was late. I was tired and I was losing patience for that shit. You know, you come into my shop that late when the fucking sign says I fucking close at fucking midnight and start giving me terms? Look, miss, I said, I'm not in the mood for games. Can you keep a secret? She asked again. The mischievous grin on her face had become dangerous. Her teeth were exposed in a near snarl, and I shivered. I didn't like that look. Not at all. It scared the fuck out of me. I wondered for a second if she was on something heavy that was going to come after me. She wasn't exactly tall, but you know what a short fuck I am. The thought of getting kicked to death by those dark M's was a little more than I really wanted to entertain. Can you? I nodded. Sure. I was still quaking inside when I took the paper from her. I unfolded it, but didn't look down. I was afraid to. As soon as I'd agreed to keep stum, her mouth had relaxed once more into that easy grin. But I didn't believe it. Not for a second. I was still waiting for her to try and rip my throat out. Her eyes opened a bit wider, eyebrows raised. I chanced to glance down at the paper and felt my heart stop. It wasn't paper, mate. It was fucking parchment with strange words carved in faded, shallow black lines. You ever been to the museum, Jackson? <coughs> I remember seeing the Magna Carta when I was a kid, all wrinkled and yellowed. Doesn't matter what they put it into a vacuum case, you can't get that kind of age out of anything. Well, this sheet of whatever the fuck it was she had, it was yellowed like the edges torn and worn. Vellum? Is that what they call it? So anyway, quit fucking moving! Anyway, so I looked down at it, see those words all staring back at me. I mean, I, I guess they were words. Runes or some kind of shit. What? I asked. Hey, she said, lifting my chin with two strong fingers. I stared into those green eyes, the pale skin. What I saw staring back at me wasn't so beautiful anymore. She looked more like a corpse, like something that crawled out of a coffin to say hello. I took a step backwards. Her eyes softened, skin turning, well, less like a dead body. What's your problem, mister? She asked. I really didn't know what to say, man, so I just shook my head. That's, that's old. She smiled. Yes, it is. What, um, what is it? She rolled her eyes. It's old, older than shit. Where'd you? She pulled the sheet of parchment. Who's telling this fucking story? She, she pulled the sheet of vellum back to her chest. Do you want my business or not? I held up my hands. Lady, I don't know what the hell it is. I want this, she whispered, and lowered the vellum. Her index finger hovered above a symbol etched in red. I looked down at it and then raised my eyes back up to hers. Can you do that? I tell you, Jackson, I've seen some strange designs before. People bring me sketches on coffee-stained napkins, ripped up pieces of paper, candy wrappers. You wouldn't believe the kinds of things people have brought me. I mean, it's not just the fucked up stuff. I've had artists, I mean as good as me, of course, bring their stuff in on heavy sketch paper, designs etched in charcoal, but I've never had someone bring in something like this. In the middle of all those crimson scratches and glyphs was a shape. I shivered just staring at it. A spiral arm of scratches and marks that culminated in a zigzagging line beneath. No outline on the shape, just the marks themselves captured in that blood, blood red. Can you do it? She asked again. I stared up at her. What is it? She tapped her foot and gave me a cold smile. It's what I want. She folded the parchment. Now stop fucking me around. Can you do it? Of course I can fucking do it, I snarled. It's going to cost you. Her thin face transformed into a skeletal grin. Money, she whispered, is no problem. When do you want it done? I asked. Now. I looked over at the clock on the wall. It's past midnight, love, and I'm utterly shattered. Was closing up shop when you came in. Let's do it tonight, she growled. Her eyes gleamed with something I've seen before, Jackson. Remember when I told you Pons came in here and I told him I couldn't have his scar tissue? Yeah, she looked like that. Felt a chill on my balls. For just a second, I thought the crazy bitch was going to attack me. Yeah, I said, okay, but it's going to cost. She held out her left hand. A roll of rubber banded hundreds stared back at me. I told you money's not a problem. I need it done tonight. All of it. 
including the cover, <coughs> she nodded. Okay, I told her. I gestured to the curtains with my head. Let's get started then. Okay, Jackson, I need a break. Yeah, yeah, let me have a smoke. Just sit there and relax. <laughs> the ink is looking good, mate, I promise. What? Well, the red does, yeah. Ever since I tatted that bitch, I've been using that red. Yeah, that's... Okay, shut up and I'll tell you, right? I took her back behind the curtains and showed her to the chair. Where do you want the tat, I asked. She lifted her shirt and tossed it to the floor. God, she has nice tits, Jackson. Not very large, mind you, but beautifully shaped. Guess you like what you see, she said to me, pointing at the bulge of my jeans. I blushed. Want it on my back, she said, and turned around. That's when I shuddered. The lower part of her back had a long scar across the middle. I could be wrong, mate, but it looked to me like she'd been stabbed. Then I noticed something else. She had a half ring around her lower neck. Up here, she said, and patted her hand between the shoulder blades. How large, I asked. Same size as you see on the paper. She turned around and locked eyes with me. Needs to be almost the same size. She leaned toward me again, <clears throat> those feral eyes burning into mine. As fucking close as you can get it. She took a breath and then muttered something. Sorry? I asked. Nothing. She tilted her head at me. Can you do it? I smiled. Get in the chair, love, and we'll get this sorted. She paused and then nodded, her small breasts barely jiggling with the movement. With a flourish, she turned and sat down in the chair. How long is it going to take? As long as it takes, love, I said. Don't call me love. My name is the man. I stopped in the middle of snapping on a surgical glove. That is a beautiful name, I whispered. I'm Nigel. She giggled. I know that. Everyone says you're the best. She paused for a moment as I unpackaged the needles, making sure I had everything ready. You better be. She whispered. I didn't say anything, just grunted. Mimi oh. Ann sighed, her body collapsing just a bit. I paused and took a good look at her. She looked wasted somehow. Her back was all bone and not much skin, like something had been eating away at her. I looked over at my inks. The red was going to be tricky, but I thought I had something to my work, something I'd been fucking around with for a while. I unfolded the vellum. Holding it up against her back, I drew the outline for the shape by hand. I don't need a fucking stencil, you know. Just wanted to get the proportions about right. I took a step back from her, comparing what was on the paper to the outlines on her back. That should do it, I whispered. Inks were sorted, needles slotted. Last chance, love. Is this what you want? Yes, she murmured. I blew out a sigh and began touching needled flesh. I gave you the phoenix on your shoulder blade, yeah? So you know how much that hurt. But you know, you've still got some meat there, mate. This girl, though, felt like I was digging straight into bone, straight into her spine. Had to have hurt like hell, but she didn't move, didn't twitch. I think I heard her hitch a breath a time or two, but apart from that, she didn't make a sound. It took a long time. The etched, disjointed shapes looked like more like a broken alphabet of sticks than letters. I had to raise the needles, drop them, raise again, and so on. The inner part of the spiral was the most difficult. The marks were so close together they could have been joined in places, but they weren't. It was a tough job, Jackson. Moving outward from the spiral arm and onto the hooked shape was easier. The marks were further apart, but the angles became more difficult. I had to bend and twist to get it right, and I wanted it to be right. This little bitch had come into the shop, demanded her tat, and offered to pay three times what I would have normally charged. But that's not why I wanted to be right. I... Well, I'm not sure, Jackson. The design just kind of spoke to me. I just knew it wanted to be exactly the way it was meant to be. Yeah, it sounds like bullshit. Shut up, Jackson, and lean back down. I ain't done with you yet. Anyway, I finished up the blacks, finished the first round of ink, and sat back from her. Bloody perfect, I whispered. It's done, she said, a tremor in her voice. It can't be done, she cried out. I don't feel... Shh, love, I said. The outlining's done. Just the first round of ink. I swished out the needles and got out my special red. We're going to start coloring now. 
She relaxed her body back into the chair and sighed. This will take a while, but it'll be worth it. Better be, she murmured. I didn't say anything to that. I just clicked on the gun and started on the cover. I tell you, Jackson, I've had some moments behind the gun where shapes take on a life of their own. What just seemed like a lifeless group of lines can suddenly burst into animation with just a bit of color. I've seen it time and time again. But on the man? I worked from the spiral out again, the crimson hue looking so much like blood. Maybe it was the red against her pale skin, or maybe it was me being so fucking tired that night, or because I was stoned. Don't know. But I can tell you this, Jackson, those lines, letters, whatever the fuck they were, they were vibrating. I'd finish etching a group of the lines and they'd start, well, dancing. No, I don't mean jumping around. They just, they seemed alive. Each time I touched the gun back down to the skin, finished the mark, and pulled up the gun to move to the next, the one I just finished seemed to dance, wiggle, and wriggle. Sweat was pouring off my forehead, and I kept having to wipe my arm across it to get it out of my eyes. I keep the shop cool, always have, but that night, I started sweating my arse off once the lines began wriggling. When I got down toward the hook, I felt like I was on an acid trip. The whole shape seemed to move, writhing, arching. I had to stop for a second. My whole body was burning with heat. I turned off the gun and then I heard it. She was moaning. And I don't mean a moan of pain. I mean like, well, like she was going to come right there in the chair. Don't stop, she breathed through gasps. The heat off her back was pulsing in waves. It was as though her body was filled with coals. I opened my mouth to speak, to say, well, I don't remember what I was going to say. I just remember trying to tell her, trying to warn her, trying to, Don't stop! She yelled. I was shaking. With numb fingers, I clicked on the gun. Three marks. Just three fucking marks, I thought. Three and I'm done and kick this crazy bitch out of here. Two marks left. It was so hot, I thought I was just going to burst into flames. One mark left. Jesus, Jackson. The girl was screaming by that point. To tell you the truth, mate. I think I was too. When I finished the last mark, the world seemed to explode with red light, the same crimson shade I'd etched onto her back. It was just for a second, and then everything went back to normal. The girl was panting, her body heaving up and down in the chair. I stared at her back and, well, you're going to tell me I'm full of shit, Jackson, but it doesn't really matter. I have to say it. Her back mate, it stared at me. The center of the spiral was just too compact, too perfect. I'm the best in the business, mate, but not even I'm that good. This thing, it was fucking alive. When she spoke, I just about screamed. We're done, she said in a low whisper. I pushed myself away from her, standing up and bumping into the counter where I kept my tools. She moved and that creepy feeling of the eyes staring into me faded. It was just a design again. A collection of marks and scarred skin. I watched her push herself up from the chair to stand on wobbly legs. She raised her arms above her head and giggled. Saved, she whispered, or something like that. There was a smell, Jackson. I noticed it the moment she stood from the chair. Pussy, mate. That's the best way I can put it. Sweet with that sour tang, intoxicating it enough to make my cock hard. When she turned, those small pale tits pointed right at me. A damn near came in my pants. She was beautiful. She was still too thin for my taste, still skin and bone, but she didn't have that pallor anymore. I wanted to fuck her right there, just rip the rest of her clothes off her body and fuck the shit out of her. But I couldn't move. I was just frozen in place. She smiled at me with glittering eyes. You did it, she said. She reached me in three graceful steps. Her arms encircled my neck and she brought her mouth to my ear. Thank you, she whispered, then she kissed me. The moment her lips touched mine, I couldn't keep mine closed. They parted. Her tongue danced inside my mouth, breath sweet. One hand left my shoulder and slowly crawled to my crotch. Her fingers grasped me through the britches and she moaned in my mouth. I came instantly, just like that. All she had to do was touch me and I exploded. We shook together, close, still kissing, each of us in the grips of an orgasm. When the shutters passed, her hands fell and wrapped around my waist. She buried her face in my shoulder and squeezed me. I could barely move, barely breathe. Thank you, 
she said again. I tried to speak, but I couldn't get enough air in my lungs. She pulled back from me, hands still around my waist. A single tear dropped from her eye. One day soon, she whispered, I'll be back. She kissed me on the mouth, her lips barely brushing mine, then let go of me. I stood like a statue and watched her clothe herself. When she finished, she smiled at me and placed a roll of bills on the counter. For you, she said, and walked past me. I heard her part the beaded curtains and walked to the front of the shop, and then the sound of the door opening and closing. Once she was gone, I was able to take in deeper breaths. It was a while before I felt strong enough to push off the counter and sit in my chair. The smell of her was fading, and I realized my crotch was wet, and then my semen had dribbled down one of my legs. I wanted to be embarrassed, but didn't have the energy. Once I was able to, I got up and ran to the shop door, locked it, barred it, and stumbled back into my office. I had to sleep, but I was scared, man. The image of that eye staring at me from the design spiral stayed in my mind. Her pale skin, the creamy back scarred with those angry crimson lines that seemed so alive. It took two joints to put me out. When I finally woke up, afternoon was already fading into twilight. I'd slept for 16 hours. Not only that, but the biggest, baddest, stiffest hard on I've ever had in my life. Well, up to that point, anyway. It was bad, man. Painful. I could smell her again. I could see her again. God, I wanted her right then. Wanted her in front of me to penetrate her, taste her, use her in every way I could imagine. Pure lust, mate. And that took some time to pass. It faded, though. I canceled my appointments for the night. Just kept the shop closed and just zoned out. By dawn the next day, it had passed and I was left with aching balls and a bloody penis. No, mate, don't ask. You don't want to know. I finally counted the bills she'd left. I'd made well over a gram for that job, mate. Well over a gram. What? Okay, Jackson, time for another break. I need another cigarette if I'm going to get through this next bit. Look, mate, I don't give a fuck how it sounds. It's what happened. Yeah, yeah. Let me get through this next bit, and we'll see how funny you think it is. <laughs> That's it. That was hot. That was hot? That was yeah. nice. Well, the, uh, the... I don't want to be Jackson. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the scary part is there's another 15, 20 minutes to that story, and uh, that's just the introduction. The really rumpy-pumpy happens in the second half, so... But you're going to have to wait for it. Oh, jeez. Damn that's you, what I do. <laughs> Well, thank you for staying up so late. And sticking around and plying me with alcohol and being so goddamn obnoxious! Yeah. Yeah. Now, does anybody have any questions? You're a bastard. Yes, I am. That's not a question, that's a statement. <laughs> are, are you a bastard? No, I have a father. What is? Are you a bastard? Why is up with this? What is it? <laughs> Except your bastardness. Right. Except How does your Why do you deny feel? you're a bastard? <clears throat> My voice? Yes. My voice feels like shite. Okay, drink more. Drink more. <laughs> Nobody has you picked up that fucking thing like 15 times and never slipped at it. That's when not true. I did slip at it. A couple times. When are we going to get the end of this story? Or that? That is a really good question, and I don't have an answer for you. Fuck you. What? I have a little bit of an issue, guys, in the sense that I have about 40 to 50,000 words of extra stuff that I could put into the feed tomorrow if I read it, which required me to get my fucking voice back. But it might fuck up the timeline and story continuity of things, so I kind of have to make a decision at some point as to just how nasty I'm going to get with this. Um, if I determine after writing Alma that I don't think it's going to destroy continuity and I can make it happen, then you guys are going to get 20th century, 21st century, and 20th century Garagas children stuff very soon. Yeah. And then you're also going to get uh, scrolls and AMA. Scrolls I'm working on right now should hopefully be done next month. Of course, I've been saying that for two months. Uh, and as soon as I get it done, edited and bitch slapped and all that good stuff, I'll put out the ebook and the podcast and the audiobook all at the same fucking time. And then after that, AMA will follow shortly after. And that'll be the end of Garaga's Children Ancients. And then I'll start work on track nine. 
or get back to track line, which is another Fiend's Tale, where Jackson, Dewhurst, and Tony are all going to be back in play, and we're back in the wonderful, glorious 21st century where I can fuck endlessly with your brains. Yeah. <laughs> which I know you love and enjoy. So, anything else? Any other questions? If I've never listened to your stuff before, where should I start? Where should you start? Uh, I would start with uh, just go, well, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to try and catch all the connections that you heard tonight, you're going to have to go read some of the Fiend stuff and then go into Grog's Children. But Tattoo is probably where you should begin because that's where a lot of this stuff is setting up at. And you'll now, then you'll know who Dewhurst, Jackson, Tony, and Nigel are. So, good help. Any other questions? Huh? Oh, and breakers. Yeah, I need to do another breaker story. It's election season. <laughs> do you want to go to the bar? I'm sorry? Do you want to go to the bar? Are you going to buy me drinks? Sure. Fuck yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs>